Okay, everybody. Hi, welcome. I am Ada, otherwise known as Black Carnivore, and I am excited to be here tonight to talk to you about recipes and, oh my God, cooking and all of that good stuff. So um, I uh, ask you to, if you're here, if you're um, on, let's see, um, make sure that you click the like button, subscribe, and click the little bell icon so you can get notification every time I go live because, uh, you know, I try to make sure I announce it in advance, but it doesn't always happen that way. So, um, uh, so let's see, who's here? Oh, wow, awesome, Porsche, Porsche, Porsche. I know. I uh, I know how to say your name. Hey, Marianne, how you doing? Um, okay, we have quite a few people here. Um, so everybody who's here, hit that like button. Uh, okay, so um, what I would like to do, I mean, I hope that you all came with um, some of your favorite recipes too, because I get questions all the time from people about like what to cook and um, and like meal ideas and some stuff like that. So. Um, you know, I might do kind of like a, a series kind of running through different things um, and, you know, kind of see what people like. Uh, but um, yeah, but I hope that you all have, uh, you know, have some ideas to share. I think it'll be super helpful for new people and, you know, even for us veterans to get some different ideas. Um, hey, Abigail, it's great to see you. Uh, Danielle, it's great to see you too. Welcome. And Katura, hey, I feel like I haven't seen you in a little while, so it's really good to see you. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, you know, put something in the chat and say hi um, if you're here uh, watching. That would be really nice. It's great to see you all. Uh, okay, so I'm going to dive right in and... Um, Hmm. Hey, Shar Shar. Oh, great to see you. I am so excited and happy to hear about your, uh, you know, your progress and your success. It is so awesome and I'm so proud of you. Uh, so, uh, you know, just amazing job and keep it up. And Marianne, um, let's see, you say you're enjoying chicken in the instant pot with chicken broth. Um, you make yourself a soup. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's a great thing to, to have. Um, yeah, Katora, I'm glad you're back too. Uh, I missed you. <laughs> you're a great addition. Um, okay. So I'm going to add, I'm going to put something up on the screen. Um, can you all see that sort of, um, so I just want to talk for, you know, especially for new people or people just kind of, uh, you know, in the beginning of their journey, I want to talk a little bit about what the carnivore diet is and kind of how you do it. Um, so this is kind of the way I, I like to talk about it. If you look at, um, you know, I've got a cow on the screen and if you, uh, you know, look at it, this is typically how, um, you know, four legged animals are butchered, um, you know, in the U S anyway, I don't, you know, it may be a little bit different in other countries. And, uh, I think the interesting thing to note is that the fattier cuts are generally in the front and the leaner cuts are generally in the back. Um, obviously oxtails are very fatty and they're all the way in the back, so it doesn't hold true for everything, but, um, but it, you know, it can help you as you kind of think about what you're, um, you know, what you're going to get at the grocery store when you're trying to choose between f lean and fatty foods, it kind of helps you to think about, you know, what cuts might be good and, um, you know, for your purposes. And, you know, as I've talked about before in, um, you know, in some of my videos, it's really important to identify, you know, what your goal is and then tailor your carnivore approach to that goal. So instead of just doing what everybody says, um, you know, I mean, like when I started carnivore, everybody said, eat two pounds of meat and, you know, and that's it. Um, and, you know, don't do anything else. Don't talk about it. Don't eat more. Don't eat less. And, uh, you know, and that, that is, that works for a certain set of people, but not others. So, um, you know, so just make sure that you are, um, targeting what you're doing and then, um, so, but you can see the chuck, the brisket, the rib and the short ribs, uh, and let's see the belly 
um, or the plate, that's, that's what that says, um, are the fatties cut to the, the uh, cow. And so, you know, you're probably going to eat more from the front and the shank as well. That's also going to have bone marrow in it. But as you move back, it's getting leaner. So the tenderloin, the short loin, the top sirloin, um, you know, it's getting leaner. And then when you get to the butt, you know, the round, it's very, very lean. Uh, but also tasty and good, um, you know, so no part of the cow is, is not usable or desirable. It's just different. So, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and talk about this and, you know, and the way I, you know, t you know, talk to people, um, choose the meats you like, uh, but be adventurous. Don't be afraid to ask your butcher about unfamiliar cuts. Um, grilling and pan frying are great, but don't get stuck on steak. Consider oven, ro oven roasting, pressure cooking, braising, and stewing for the tougher yet more flavorful cuts of meat. And uh, eat these cuts from any ruminant animal, including cattle, sheep, goats, bison, buffalo, deer, elk, giraffes, and even camels. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, any kind of animal that grazes on grass, that's going to work for you. So, oh, I see a lot of questions running through. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Portia says, thanks for the love you guys gave me for my one year sober anniversary. Love you all. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, you know, I, that, that's just so awesome. And I'm so proud of you and, uh, so happy, you know, I had an opportunity to share your story. So anybody who's listening, if you're curious about, um, you know, Portia's story, go, uh, back into the, you know, to my YouTube channel and go back, uh, um, you know, a couple of months and you will see her story and it really is amazing. So I'm so proud of you, Portia. And, uh, you know, you're doing great and you look great and you're like a poster child for why you want to go sober because you can get healthier, you know, drop a bunch of weight and, um, you know, really be able to keep up with your boys. So that's awesome. Um, and let's see. Uh, Katora says, thank you. And we've had a lot of grilled chicken thighs lately. Yeah, that's great. Um, I can say hot summers make me want less dense food. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's interesting to note. And Abigail says, uh, oh yeah, that, um, Portia rocked, um, one, her one year anniversary and it's inspi and her journey is very inspiring. Um, let's see, let me add these to the broadcast. Um, so that's awesome. And Marianne says, I love my air fryer. Air fried uh, bone, bone in strip steak has been my favorite recently with some air fried bacon for more fat. Um, Porsche loves uh, chuck roast. Marianne laughs at giraffes. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So anyway, that gives you some ideas of things to have. And, um, and Char says, I wonder if that's why I've been on chicken wings so hard. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, my taste, my desire for beef doesn't seem to change from summer to winter. Um, I mean, I guess I tolerate cold food. That would be like the only difference for me. Okay. So uh, number two, if you're new again to the carnivore diet, just to run through it. So I, you know, I just gave you a list of the different kinds of ruminant meat, um, for us in the U S you know, the most ubiquitous and the least expensive would be, um, beef. But if you are in another country, it might be lamb, uh, it might be goat. Um, you know, any one of those is fine. Just choose what you like. Uh, you know, you can get it ground, um, you can get roast the big chunks of meat that you, you know, roast in the oven. You can get, uh, brisket, um, steaks, shank, oxtails, uh, chuck roast ribs. All of those are good choices. If you're going to go with poultry, do chicken wings, thighs, and legs with the skin. Same for Turkey. Um, you know, so skip the breast too lean, <laughs> uh, eggs with the yolk. Um, dairy, uh, also, uh, you know, good choices, but you should certainly check for allergies. A lot of people do have sensitivities. So if you do, of course, don't eat it. Uh, cheese, heavy cream, yogurt, um, even milk and kefir, um, are options, um, though they can be high in carbs. So if you are, 
um, you know, trying to lose weight or reverse something, those are not going to be good choices for you. But if you're like a performance athlete, you know, and you use a lot of calorie, uh, calories or energy through the day, then, you know, it might be fine. Uh, pork, um, pork shoulder, pork chop, ham, pork belly, bacon, sausage, pepperoni, pork rinds, all of those are good. I would caution you not to try, try to, uh, you know, not to rely on processed foods though. So things like, you know, pepperoni and pork rinds are very processed foods. They're still all animal, but they're very processed. So they don't have a lot of nutrition left and, um, you know, they're good for accents, for fun, for entertainment, but not, you know, nutrition. So make sure you're eating actual nutrition. Um, you know, pair like the pork rinds with a liver pate dip or, you know, put the pepperoni slices on top of a burger. That's um, a better approach. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, uh, oh, Portia's eating wings right now. <laughs> wings do taste good, uh, no doubt. Um, Danielle says, I've been slow cooking oxtails and thin sliced beef short ribs together off the chain. Wow. Um, if th that is a combination, I don't even have the words. It's like hard to come out. Um, but that is like a combination made in heaven. Uh, I'm going to have to try that cause that really does sound awesome. Um, yeah. Katora too is bowled over like me. Like what? <laughs> That's so good. So, so good. Uh, okay. And then, um, so that's the pork and then, uh, let's see what's next. Um, you can also eat fish, certainly, um, shrimp, scallops, crab, lobster, oysters, uh, bass, salmon, cod, uh, mackerel, sardines, tuna. Lately I've been eating haddock, which I didn't know I would like, but I do. It's very tasty. So, uh, you know, any kind of fish is fine. Uh, you know, as long as you tolerate it or don't have any sensitivity to it. Uh, it's very lean, so unless you're trying to go for a lean carnivore, you're probably going to have to add um, quite a bit of uh, butter or, you know, some kind of fat to it. Uh, another th option is to, um, you know, dredge it through, uh, you know, uh, a scrambled egg and then, um, you know, dredge it through pork rind uh, crumbs and fry it. Um, and that, that kind of breading makes it very fatty and it's delicious and it tastes just like fried fish. So if that's something that you like, you might really, really enjoy that. So that's my suggestion. Um, Portia made lamb chops for the first time last week and devoured them so good. Oh my gosh. I am so glad you finally had a uh, pork chop. I mean, lamb chops, they are so good and surprisingly fatty. It's weird. Like beef, you know, gets like trimmed to death, but with pork, I mean, sorry, with lamb, they don't seem to touch it at all. So it's got, you know, it's very fatty. It's very delicious. And for a while, my, my supermarket had lamb chops, um, for nine ninety nine a pound. So I was like, at that price, I'll just buy them all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's awesome. I, I actually, I think that was right before Easter and that's when, um, that, yeah, that's when you always see like tons of lamb available and then the rest of the year you kind of have to hunt for it. But, um, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, so that was fish. And then for fats, um, yeah, Portia, that's expensive. Well, nine ninety nine a, a pound is cheap where I am. So normally it's like anywhere from fifteen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine a pound. So, um, yeah. So when I saw nine ninety nine, it was like, Oh, okay. That's an excellent price. I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> um, okay. And, um, Marianne says beef every day is my, uh, staple, um, that, uh, she garnishes with eggs, bacon, fish, fresh or tinned, uh, for taste. Yeah, that's a, that's a great approach. That's, um, you know, what I love to do. Definitely. Uh, Studsy Nubian, welcome. It's great. I haven't seen you in a while and I'm glad you like lamb chops too. Uh, okay. So when you're, you know, on a carnivore diet, you're going to need the fats, butter, tallow, suet, uh, pea fat trimmings, uh, bacon fat, ghee, lard, duck fat, all great choices, you know, whichever ones you like, whichever ones you want to eat, those are good. And, um, uh, you know, and then for beverages, well, this is what I recommend and then people do what they want to do. So <laughs> it's up to you. I still consider you carnivore if you do other things for beverages, but, um, you know, but it's up to you. 
So I recommend, you know, black coffee, um, no cream, uh, black herbal tea, uh, water, still or sparkling, um, lemon juice can be okay, and uh, bone broth of some kind. And then condiments, um, mustard, hot sauce, herbs and spices, salt and pepper, just make sure everything is actually sugar free. I, um, I think I've told you all when I, I picked up some mustard um, at the supermarket and it was uh, the Sir Kensington and it was supposed to be, you know, very fancy, whatever. And it didn't say anything on the front about being sweet. And then when I got it home, it was so sweet. And I looked at the ingredients and the second ingredient was honey. So it was some kind of honey mustard without saying so. And so that was a real problem for me. So, yeah, not cool. Uh, okay. So here are some uh, high-fat carnivore meal ideas. These are certainly not all, not even all the ones that I eat, but, um, you know, some things I like. Let me know what you guys um, have tried or what kind of meals you've put together um, and, uh, and what you think of these options. Um, I'd love to, like, keep adding to my list. I feel like, you know, I mean, I've good imagination, but you know, it's always helpful to hear from other people. Um, let's see. So Marianne says, um, I'm off the coffee for over a week. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad <laughs> that you're doing so well and that you think I'm right. Um, I'm glad that you've unlocked a new level. And, uh, Portia re recently tried a pate made with duck fat and duck meat and eggs. And it was so good as well. Yeah. You know, the first time I had duck, I was like, wow, this is really good. Like, how did I not know about this? It's really, really good. Um, okay. There's a bunch of people here. So if you could all click the like button, subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notification every time I go live, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, I, you know, it helps me a lot and it helps send a message to the YouTube algorithm that this is content that people want so it can get spread out to more people. Right. Um, so I need your help to do that. Uh, okay. So, um, so one of my favorites is, uh, scrambled eggs and bacon and butter. Um, and actually what is pictured here is, uh, this is sauteed, um, sauteed scallops with flank and cut, uh, short ribs. And those are amazing. I mean, that, that is a picture of my, I think my second favorite meal. My first favorite meal would be the sauteed scallops in butter with scrambled eggs. Um, those two are like, you know, what I'm looking for to really treat myself because things have, I have done something great. That's what I'm going to get. It's, um, really amazing. Uh, okay. And then ribeye with eggs, uh, is another choice. Oxtails, lamb chops, hamburgers with roasted bone marrow. I love roasted, bo ro roasted bone marrow. So I highly recommend you try that. Um, steak and liver pate. I really, you know, I, I enjoy the liver pate that I make. I don't make it very often and it is definitely an, for, well, for me, an involved process. I got to pull out a lot of a, you know, um, equipment and stuff that normally is sort of packed away, but it is good. Uh, chuck roast. I love, I think that is probably my favorite cut of meat. So I know everybody else loves the ribeye. Ribeye is good, but I, I think I would put chuck roast over the ribeye. Um, you can make some kind of beef stew mixing together different types of beef. So heart, chuck, shank, um, the delicious combo. A brisket that is amazing. I love brisket. Short ribs, any kind of ribs, flank and cut ribs, also awesome. Oso buco is uh, beef shank, or um, and and that's I love that. It's uh, just amazing, and I make that in the pressure cooker. Um, you know, just making sure to brown it first. Surf and turf uh, is amazing. So any of these kinds of fish that you like, shrimp, lobster, scallop, salmon mixed with a steak or burgers or some kind of beef and having that with butter. Um, ground meat crumbles is like, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like, for me, it's like baby food. You know, it's just, it's easy. It is, um, it's like comfort food, <laughs> carnivore comfort food, super easy to have. And it's really filling and great. Um, 
and let's see pan fried tongue um that is sort of new for me but um you know tasty good hamburger and scrambled eggs i don't know if anybody's made like those chaffles without cheese but just using hamburger and egg in the um in the waffle maker that is um that's pretty cool uh, deviled eggs i don't know if anybody's made deviled eggs i have um you know sort of made it with like a well, my effort at a Baconese, which doesn't always turn out well. Uh, let me let that go by. Um, so my Baconese doesn't always turn out that well. But, you know, you can, um, you know, as some of you are definitely going to be better at me, better than me at that. Uh, but a deviled egg might, is a really nice thing, too. Um, let's see. Who have we got here? Um, uh, Bubble Girl. Bubble Girl uh, BM says Sir Kensington avocado mayo from Costco started to separate halfway through the container. Yikes, that does not sound good. <laughs> I'm sorry that happened. That sucks. Um, hey, uh, Angela um, CVK Carnivore, welcome. It's so good to see you um, from Arizona. Angela from Arizona. And Mr. Bogglesworth. Um, you ordered one of those cinder grills. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I look forward to, to hearing about how that goes. I'm so jealous. I really, really just want to grill. I want to be able to grill food. I am so jealous. And um, yeah, so I want to hear all about it. And Danielle says, um, yeah, burger crumbles. Not really feeling that. I would just make some burgers with the ground beef. Yeah, I mean, you know, eat it however you like. Um, different people, you know, have different uh, ways that they like having it. Um, but burger crumbles are, um, I don't know, I just, I guess I find it quicker to just throw in a pan and it's done pretty quickly. But, um, yeah, but it, it is, for me, it's like eating baby food. You know, it really doesn't require a lot of chewing and it's just um, perfect. <laughs> Uh, okay, Portia. Oh my God. Thank you for the super sticker. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, you guys, uh, don't, uh, maybe don't realize how, uh, helpful and supportive, um, these stickers and, and chats are. It really does help me to make sure I can continue to bring content like this that is helpful to all of you. So I encourage you to click that little, um, I don't know. I think there's a little icon at the bottom of the, um, chat box where that's like a dollar sign and you can, you know, purchase a sticker or a, a super chat and contribute and support the show. Okay. Let's see. Hey, Paulette Stansel. I'm always, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm always trying to, uh, let you know when I'm on clubhouse to ping you in, but I think you have your notifications turned off. So, um, you know, just to let you know, <laughs> And cute lady Corpru. Great. Oh my gosh. It's so awesome to see everybody. I feel like, wow, we've got like some uh, regulars who have uh, come back after a long while. So it is awesome to see you guys. Uh, okay. So these were some of the meal ideas that I was thinking about. Um, Angela, you love burger crumbles too. Um, six out of seven days. Yeah. I, I can go many days, many days before, you know, I, I want to switch to something else. Um, okay. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, some of the cooking techniques, because I think this is a question that a lot of people have, um, or maybe don't quite realize. Um, oh, that's so cute. D uh, DC lady for life says, uh, not to change the subject, but when is the purple hair coming back? Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have the stuff. I mean, you know, I, I had a, a red, um, you know, a red patch, a, a couple of days ago as well. So, uh, I'm sure it'll be back this week. I will, I will definitely make sure there is a video out or a picture out so that you can see. Um, and Marianne, thanks for the super sticker. $5. That is so awesome. Thank you so much. And, um, I love the little dog clapping. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so, um, but let's talk about the cooking method. So braising is a, like a, a wet method of cooking. 
Um, I kind of divide the cooking methods into wet and dry and um, or frying, which is, um, well, I mean, cooking in oil. So, uh, you know, and different cuts of meat, I think, do better in the wet in their wet version versus their dry version. But it's also, you know, has to do with your taste. For a long time, I did a lot of braising, stewing, um, slow, uh, slow cooking, pressure cooking. And, um, you know, and I enjoyed it, but then I, I kind of got to the point where I kind of prefer, um, a, a drier and more, um, yeah, like a dry meat, you know, not wet. And, uh, so it's just, you know, kind of a di different texture. Like if you think about how, um, how would I explain it? Like, uh, well, so well, I'm going to go through it, but I, let, let me get back here to braising. So I wrote down, you know, sort of the definition, but basic, basically braising involves pan searing to brown, you know, the exterior of the meat and then putting it in like a Dutch oven, a slow cooker, or even a pressure cooker and cooking it like that. So a pressure cooker is not as long, but because the meat is being cooked under pressure, it, you know, mimics what would happen over a length of time. So I think that pressure cooking would fall in the braising category, but it um, doesn't take as long. And, you know, what is so, part of what's so great about it is it, it seems to work best on the cuts of meat that have, um, that are tough, but have a lot of uh, collagen and, um, and let's see, what is it? Uh, collagen and connective tissue and um, the gelatinous kind of um, uh, stuff in it that, that, you know, makes the sauce kind of thick and um, kind of sticky. So the cuts of meat that have that really seem to do best in braising because it turns that water into, um, or that, you know, the moisture in that cooking method into a really thick and delicious gravy. So you think about things like oxtails, um, and the things that you might cook in your slow cooker, you know, various kinds of stews, um, with chuck roasts or, you know, cooking briskets. Um, those things seem to do really well in, um, in that kind of method. So that is one of my, I mean, it's certainly an easy way to cook. Um, you know, it can go on for a long time without your having to be involved at all. So this is the way I cook oxtails in the instant pot. Um, so I salt two to three pounds of oxtails. Uh, I, and on the instant pot, I turn on the saute feature until it gets hot. And then I add a little tallow and I sear the oxtails, um, on the, in the saute mode in the pot, um, you know, over several batches. And, you know, if, if you've got three pounds of oxtails, it can take a lot of batches. And then, um, I add all the oxtails back into the pot and then I add either water or if I have a couple of, uh, ice cubes of bone broth that, you know, I've told you before how I freeze, freeze it in ice cube trays. Um, I add that to the instant pot until I've got, um, you know, until the meat is sitting about in sitting in about two inches of water uh, or liquid. And then I cover and cook on high pressure for 75 minutes. So that is a longer time than I think you'll read most places, but I feel like when I've cooked it for less, like it hasn't had that fall off the bone texture, the bone, you know, the broth in it has not been, um, that gelatinous. And so I, I like to cook it longer, but I would love to hear from you if you do it for less time. Um, you know, I think you're going to have to adjust it based off your device. If you, you have a different type of pressure cooker, uh, you know, it might be more or less time that you need. Um, so misty oxtails are your favorite. Oh yeah. Everybody, almost everybody's favorite. Um, when they're cooked right, they're amazing. So this is a picture of some of the oxtails that I have made in the past. Um, I think that batch I actually had, um, Jamaican curry that I added to it. So I, I was able to find a jar of Jamaican curry that had no flour or sugar or any other kind of, um, additives to it. So I highly recommend, you know, if you're going to use spices to look for that. Um, unfortunately when I've looked at a lot of Jamaican curry bottles, they, you know, have all kinds of things in them. So, 
um, you, you know, you definitely need to keep your eyes open. You need to look and see what's there. Um, yeah, Katori, oxtails in, um, uh, oxtails in the Instant Pot are great. Yeah. It's, it's such an easy way to cook. Um, okay. And uh, so then roasting is the opposite approach of the braising. So that's like a wet, you know, a wet approach. So oven roasting requires um, cooking food in an uncovered pan in the oven. And it's a dry cooking technique. And, you know, basically hot air is circulating around it and, and cooking it. And, um, you know, depending on the type of food that you're cooking, you'll do, you know, you'll do it at a low heat, a moderate heat, or even a high heat. So like, um, roasted bone marrow, I do at 450 degrees for 15 minutes. Um, it does best at a high heat. Um, now what's pictured here is a rump roast, which if you remember that picture I showed you of the cow, it's like the butt of the cow. So this is like a super lean and tough cut of meat, but it's really good. So this one, I think it was almost like, I don't know, it might have been like six pounds or maybe even eight pounds. This is a big chunk of meat. And um, I seared the exterior and then uh, I put it in the oven at 170 degrees Fahrenheit. I, I didn't even really realize my oven went that low. And, um, I cooked this for eight hours until it was, I think, 135 degrees inside, which makes it, I think, medium rare. So you can see it's really, really pink. But to me, it was like, oh, this is roast beef. <laughs> it was like, the rump is not that exotic. This is roast beef. I know what this is. So I highly recommend that you give it a try. It is very, very lean, but, um... You know, like if you have been missing sandwiches, everybody loves that protein spraying modified fast bread that uh, Maria Emmerich has uh, created a recipe for. You know, slice up some of this, put it on that bread with a little mustard or horseradish, um, or even make some ba bacon A's, and you know, you've got like a solid sandwich if you like sandwiches. So I, I can't recommend it enough. Um, I really enjoyed this. Now it was great warm, but I was fearful of reheating it to get it warm again because I didn't want to cook it any further. You know, this is a very tough cut of meat and really the best thing with cut tough cuts of meat is to, um, you know, cook it to rare to medium rare and kind of, you know, leave it there. So, um, you know, I kept slicing it really thin like roast beef and, uh, you know, and that was a good option. Um, that many pounds though was too much for me at one time. It was like, I could not keep up with eating that. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Anna from New Zealand. Hey, welcome. So glad to see you. And, um, Misty says you're going to try 75 minutes. Your ninja foodie, you usually cook it for one hour, but it doesn't fall off the bone very easy though. Oh yeah. Then it definitely needs more time. You know, I don't know. I mean, um, try 75 minutes, maybe even go longer. I mean, I don't know that there's, you know, harm in going longer, but I, I like it fall off the bone and the bones get so soft that, you know, even I can chew on them. But, um, when I give them to my dog, like she just eats them like they're grapes or something, just chews right through them and they're gone in a few minutes. Um, Char loves air fried liver. Good. <laughs> You, I, I am so impressed by your, um, you know, how open you are to different types of foods. You know, a lot of people are very squeamish. So that's awesome. And Danielle says, um, I love to butterfly a whole chicken and roast it in the oven. Makes the skin nice and crispy. Oh yeah, absolutely. What do they call that? I think it's called, um, spatchcock or yeah, spatchcock. Um, when you cut open the, the food and you flatten it out and then I don't know there's a thing that you know holds it open and then you put it in the oven or over a fire to grill it um yeah I don't know I that's I think I've heard that word before 
Mr. Brogglesworth, thank you so much for the super chat. I really, really appreciate it. I am so glad and so thankful for how much you appreciate the work that I do. And I, I love to help people. So, um, you know, thank you. Um, thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. And everybody, wow, there's a lot of people here. So please, everybody who's watching, hit the um, like button, subscribe, and click the little bell icon so you can get notification every time I go live. And, um, you know, and uh, I just really appreciate the support. Now, I did not get to make another commercial for this week, but look forward to more of that in the future because it was really fun to make something that was a little bit different and um, I really enjoyed it. So I would, um, I, you know, I'm definitely going to make more. But I do want to take a moment to uh, let you know about Bel Campo. So there are these, uh, you know, a, a grass-fed, grass-finished, regener regenerative farms in California. And they, um, you know, they, they create uh, or they, they sell the, um, you know, really good quality, high quality grass-fed uh, meat and pastured pork and chicken and so on. So I highly recommend if you are looking for some, uh, you know, really good quality meats uh, that you check them out. So if you use my code ADAY10, you know, ADAY and the number 10, you'll get a 10% off of your order, of every order. And, um, you know, and they have a lot of really good stuff. So uh, if you're, you know, and it's not always easy to find, uh, especially things like pastured pork, you know, where you have um, pigs who are raised in a more humane way and have access to sunlight. Because remember, um, you know, pork is, can actually be a really good meat for us. But um, when they're raised in cages in the dark or inside, you know, their skin is not getting access to sunlight. And so they're um, not producing the kind of vitamin D that you would normally get if you were eating, um, you know, pigs that were raised outside. And, uh, you know, and as far as chickens go, um, you know, I think that they're still using vegetarian feed, but the chickens are also outside. They're, you know, they're also um, foraging for their own food. So it's not entirely like, you know, they're eating, um, you know, that they're eating, uh, you know, just feed and all sitting on top of one another in cages. Uh, I can definitely tell they're, you know, it, de it definitely has a different um, taste and texture from Purdue. So it's clear that this is... Um, you know, pastured chicken, uh, l let's just say. So perhaps a little tougher, but it's okay because it's, you know, it's um, good, better for you. So if you're like chicken, definitely check it out. And uh, yeah, and they have some, some good products. So use my code and um, check them out and uh, let me know what you think. So most of the meat here is from Bel Campo, but I think this roast that I'm talking about here, this rump roast, was from Whole Foods. And the reason I got it actually was that one day I was looking on Whole Foods website and they were having a sale on rump roast for $4.41 a pound. So I was like, great, I'll buy 20 pounds. Um, not really thinking about what that what that actually looked like. So I got a couple of these giant, um, you know, giant loaves, but, uh, but you know, it was worth it. I really did enjoy, I enjoyed the food. It was good. And I definitely see that this method of roasting it was the only way to do it. I definitely, it would not have turned out well if I had tried to, um, I don't think it would have turned out well if I tried to cook it in the pressure cooker because there's not enough fat and connective tissue in it to give it, you know, that velvety um, texture that you get from, you know, the, the sauce um, and the gravy that you get when you're cooking short ribs or, or oxtails. So it just would have been simultaneously dry and wet, if that makes sense to you. It just, I don't think it would be good. Um, so that's my recommendation. Let's see. Uh, Marianne asks if anyone has experience with the protein sparing modified bread. Um, so many people are loving it, loving it, loving it. So I hear and see people posting pictures and talking about it all the time. So I got to say, you got to try it. Um, I definitely think it is worth trying. Um, if you like bread, you should, well, let's say if you like bread, you should try it. If you love bread, you might not want to because I hear it's very, very much like bread. And so it might make you, it might make you desire and crave bread more if that makes any sense to you. So that would be my approach or my thinking about it. 
I don't love bread, so it's, you know, when I gave it up, it was kind of like, you know, uh, whatever, you know, and it's not something that I crave, but um, it is a convenient way of eating, though. So, uh, you know, I mean, a sandwich, every culture has something sandwich-like because it's a convenient way to get food, you know, from the plate to your mouth. So, I, you know, I could see why you might want to bring it back. And the idea of making a roast beef sandwich is actually kind of appealing to me. If any, if I miss, if I miss bread in any way, I guess, you know, having like a pastrami sandwich or a roast beef sandwich is, um, you know, one way that I might like to enjoy it again. But, um, so yeah, I say, try it, knock yourself out. Uh, Abigail says, yes, the term is spatchcock. Okay, great. And uh, Abigail is also curious about the protein sparing modified fast bread that Maria thinks, uh, that Maria makes. Um, yeah, I think you should all try it. Um, and Bubble Girl asks if grass fed is uh, less fatty. So it, not necessarily, it depends on the farmer, but I find in most cases when I'm getting it, it's less fatty. But that's also because, you know, the, the farmers are, um, they're trying to satisfy the needs and requirements of, you know, the general population. And most people are not looking for more fatty meat. So it doesn't have to be leaner, but often it is because, um, that's what people think we want. So you may need to, if you're going to a local farm and you're able to have a conversation or you're having a conversation with the the person who's actually going to process and butcher the cow, then you can explain or try to explain that you want all the fat and don't trim the fat and blah, blah, blah. And you might find that it's not, um, it's not so lean. Um, but you know, uh, that being said also the, um, you know, the grass finishing process, um, you know, it just takes longer for uh, the animal to, you know, come to its full size that way. And, uh, and so, and sometimes they don't want to wait, um, which is why, you know, they might be slaughtered a little early and not, not get to be as fatty as they would normally be as a full grown adult. Um, that's also why, you know, some cows are grass fed. I mean, most cows are grass fed because that's sort of the cheapest, easiest way to do it. And then um, perhaps they are green finished, which fattens them up in the last few months before slaughter. And, um, you know, and just like, you know, with most animals, I mean, they eat a lot of like corn and the stuff that fattens them up. And that's what gets the marbling and the muscle and all of that. Um, and uh, so that, you know, that's the, the grain finishing part. Um, so Belcampo does grass fed, grass finished. And it's also a regenerative farm, meaning that um, I guess they sequester more carbon in the soil and not out. So, um, you know, it's, it's a better way of farming. It conserves topsoil and it helps the environment. So um, if you are concerned about those things and we're choosing to not eat meat for that reason, um, if you eat regenerative meat, uh, you're actually making a bigger impact than if you were to choose not to eat meat at all. Um, my dog's just doing something weird. Uh, let's see. Okay. So Anna asks, um, you just found this channel two days ago and you're loving it. And you also started keto in February and carnivore in May lost 21. Oh, wow. 44 pounds. And you're happy to eat head to tail as generally all meat um, are grass fed. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. What incredible success. So I would love to hear, you know, all about um, all the benefits that you have found, what you, you know, how you've improved and, you know, what's next? Are you going to like take over the world? You're going to, you know, just rock it. Like that is just amazing. I'm always happy to see people really succeed and be surprised by the level of success that they have. Um, and Marianne is asking if you can make protein sparing modified bread in the air fryer. I have no idea. I'm going to guess no, because I've never seen anybody talking about doing it that way, but I don't know, maybe. 
Um, I don't know. Uh, okay, let's see. So let's uh, have a couple more slides. So that was roasting. And then pan frying on the stovetop is another regular that is, um, you know, that's a really good thing to, um, to do as well. So this pan frying of steak, I sort of, um, I do in the cast iron skillet and I kind of got this technique from, um, what's his name? Uh, Rustin Boneyard. He, um, I follow him on Instagram and I had uh, interviewed him a while back. He, he wrote a book called, um, you know, how to cook the perfect steak. I think that was what it was called. And, um, you know, and so it was really helpful. And I, so I did this interview with him to learn more about how to cook the perfect steak and then learn more about his story. He was carnivore for a long time and then, um, added back a little bit of, um, fruits and vegetables because, um, you know, he just kind of got too thin on carnivore. So, uh, you know, so it was interesting to hear his, uh, his story. So I recommend you go back and you listen to that interview as well, or check out his book, um, if you Google Rustin Boneyard, um, you know, he's got a website, he's got a YouTube channel and, um, he's got a cook talking about how to cook the perfect steak. But kind of what I learned from him is that you really need to have enough fat in the pan. So, you know, the, the steak is actually cooking in the fat, not, um, you know, the protein fibers making contact directly with the, um, with the skillet. So you want to make sure there's enough fat in there. And, you know, it, I find it, it's actually easier to cook a good steak, the more fat is in the pan. So, um, you know, if I've gone, uh, you know, frying things for a couple of days and things are rendering out fat and the fat is building up in the pan, you know, I can get to the point where I have a steak that will be, you know, halfway submerged, you know, in the fat when I have heated up the pan. So I, you know, and I like to heat it on medium heat, I heavily salt the steak on both sides. If you're going to let it sit out the steak, um, either, you know, I mean, either salt it just like right before you're going to cook it or salt it two hours before and let, and basically what that does, the salt in the surface of the, um, of the steak is it draws the water and the, you know, the liquid in the steak out to the surface. It mixes with the salt and then the water see seeps back into the steak, drawing that salt back in to season through all the way through. But if you don't give it the full like two or three hours or however long it takes for that process to happen, you're going to draw the water out of the steak and then, you know, and then you get rid of the water as you put it into the frying pan. And so, you know, the moisture that would have been inside the steak is now, you know, it's been fried off on the, you know, a, a, as you put it in the pan. So if you're going to salt the steak, you know, in advance, give it time. Um, and then you want the steak to be dry because, you know, as much, uh, liquid is on the surface of the steak, like that is actually steaming the steak instead of frying it, which is what you really want. Cause that's going to give you that golden crispy texture. So, um, so you want to dry off the steak and like, um, you know what I, if I'm getting fancy, I, this is not something I do all the time, but if I'm getting fancy, you know, dry off the steak, salt it, put it in the refrigerator on, um, you know, on some kind of rack or, or grill or something. And it, uh, you know, it, it will dry. I mean, it's drying in the refrigerator, not on the, um, you know, not on the countertop, but, you know, let it, leave it in there a couple of hours and that process will happen where the water's coming out and then it's going back in and then it, you know, dries and evaporates. So the surface is, feels very dry and then you go ahead and fry it and it can get really, get that perfect crispy, um, exterior. So, uh, so that's what I do. And then, um, I, you know, put it in the pan when it's really hot. Um, I'm not turning the heat all the way up. I just am letting it heat up for a long time. And the thing about a, um, a cast iron skillet that people like is that it's um, supposed to take heat very evenly. So there's not going to be hot and cold spots on the pan and it holds heat for a long time. So, you know, it takes, you know, a little while to heat up, but it holds that heat and retains it. 
So um, you want to, you know, let it do that. And then when it's really hot, you put it in, you're going to hear this whoosh, you know, as it's um, evaporating um, any liquid and it's cooking. And then, um, you know, and you leave it for several minutes until you get it nicely how it browned the way you want it. And, um, you know, turn it over and do it again. And then if it's a very thick steak, you might want to leave it longer or you might need to finish it in the oven if you want it more cooked. Um, but if not, you just take it off and eat it just like that. You, you know, you let it rest and then, um, you know, and then eat it after, I don't know, I guess you let it rest like 10 minutes. I, I generally don't let it rest. Um, <laughs> I just dig right in, but, uh, I should, <laughs> I should. So that's my approach to a pan fried steak. Um, I'd love to see here how you guys do it. Um, yeah. And let's see. Um, Anna says, I was a diabetic now off all meds for diabetes. Sleeping is so much better. Even my kidney function is improving. Blood pressure is nearly normal. Still 20 kilo kilos to go, but not in a rush. Loving the journey. I am 57. Wow. Wow. That is just all, um, success story. All, I mean, wow. I can't believe it. So off medication, reversing diabetes, um, getting, uh, sleeping better, kidney function, improving blood pressure, we're normalizing. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's all the things. That's exactly the perfect thing. Uh, Island Girl, hey, from Jamaica, it's great to see you again. It's been a while. Oh my gosh, there's all these people coming back. Thank you. I'm really glad you're all um, coming back in. And um, Paulette says, oh, you okay, awesome. So you fixed the thing with Clubhouse. So, um, <laughs> okay, so you're ready for the next notification. Thank you. And so for everybody who's listening, if you're interested in Clubhouse, you know, feel free, reach out to me. I can give you, I have a, you know, invites I can give you so you can get in. And, um, you know, I think for a while I'm going to do some like Q and A's there. So, uh, you know, like I did last week here, just sort of, uh, answer, answer questions and help people get started. There's definitely an uptick in the number of people trying or, you know, aware of the carnivore diet, but I also, there's an uptick in people who have, you know, kind of crazy ideas about about how to do it. And uh, uh, some of those ideas are definitely keeping them from the kind of success that we just heard from Anna. So I, you know, really want to try to get, um, you know, a clear voice and some clear reason out there. And, uh, you know, and that's why I wanted to do this video tonight and just kind of share some of my thoughts about, you know, food and cooking. Because the thing is with the carnivore way of eating is it's not you know, it's not like recipes, you know, you don't need to know about spices and different things to mix together, but you do need to, to actually have cooking skills and understand, you know, what, a you know, specific kind of cooking method works with what kind of meat so that you're, you know, pairing those things together and you're figuring out the best way to apply, you know, heat, salt, and, um, fat. And, uh, so that's, that's kind of what I have been learning and I've been teaching myself and this by no means comes natural to me. As I've said to all of you, I do cook and I do try to, you know, cook well, but it is not for pleasure. You know, this is not, um, a fun hobby for me the way it, it is for some other people. I, I just do it because I like to eat good food and I don't like to spend like millions of dollars to go to a steakhouse and get a good steak. So, uh, I wanted to learn to do it at home. So I think, you know, it, everybody can do it. So I highly recommend that you give that a try. Um, okay. And, uh, yeah, Marianne, Anna was awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. So Monica says I air fry my steaks now five minutes per side at 500 degrees. Perfect every time, but cast iron is also great. Yeah, Monica, I mean, you know, the, you, you can't beat the ease and quickness of an air fryer. So um, I definitely make use of that as well. And lately, as I've been having a London broil, I find that's the quickest way for me to, um, to cook the London broil, uh, quickest and easiest. So I air fry it, 
Now, my air fryer only goes up to 400 degrees. Uh, I didn't even know they went up to 500, so that's awesome. So I cook mine at 400 degrees for, um, you know, four or five minutes per side, depending on, you know, how thick a piece it is. And, um, you know, and that works out great. So that's awesome. Uh, but I find, you know, the air fryer is awesome, but it doesn't, I don't get that same kind of brown crusty ex exterior that you get when you pan fry it. I mean, I guess there's no other way to do it, but that way. So the air fryer is nice, but it, you know, there's that one piece that's lacking. Um, let's see. And Abigail, oh, you did the clubhouse for Android and it said to wait for approval. So, um, yeah, send me a DM and I'll send you a link that, um, should get you, should get you in. Definitely. Uh, and Anna, you would like to join clubhouse. Awesome. Um, so yeah, send me a, a direct message in Instagram and I'll send you a link to get in Anna. And, uh, yeah, it's awesome to have a community of people that you can talk to and ask questions of. Um, yeah, because people will think you are crazy. And, um, but over time, as they see your success and see you looking good and really aging backwards, they too, um, not initially, but later on, or they also are going to be like, so, so what's this thing you're doing? And, you know, how do you look so good? And you're, you know, you're so healthy now and blah, blah, blah. So I would, you know, just, uh, just hold, hang tight. You know, they'll come around. They will. Um, and I can't believe how quickly you lose, you lost that weight too. I mean, you said since February you were doing carnivore, I think. Um, oh no, you started carnivore in May but you started keto in February, but you know, that's uh, amazing progress in, you know, a pretty short time period. So that's awesome. Um, let's see. And Marianne says, if you put frozen meat into the air fryer, it gets browner than room temperature. I think, um, I think Laura Spath had, uh, had this recipe. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I've done that before for sure in the air fryer. I feel like, um, it hasn't always turned out great though. Um, cooking meat from frozen, I feel like sometimes it got more rubbery, maybe because I just didn't know how much, um, I was going to have to cook it to, you know, to defrost in the center. But, um, you know, I might try that again because, you know, getting that brown exterior is important to me. Monica says, I heat the basket pan first so that it's scorching hot and then, and then get a crust. But my air fryer is a toaster oven style. So, um, not pull the drawer open. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know, I never preheat my air fryer, but I've definitely heard people talking about that. So I don't know, maybe I'll try that next time. I think that might make a difference though. Um, and Marianne says, but you're right. The best browning is in the frying pan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so tell me what is your, you know, ideal and perfect, um, pan frying, uh, you know, cooking method for your, um, for your steaks. I would love to hear it. I'm hearing air fryer. I'm wondering, Hmm. I'm kind of wondering now if I, do that with London broil. Like, um, cook it from frozen. And if I, what that would do to the outside, I, I got, I'm, I'm going to be experimenting tomorrow. I will, you know how that goes. I'm going to give it a try though. Oh my God. Numusa. Wow. Oh my God. It's so awesome to see you. It's really been a long time. Welcome. I missed you too. And mommy does keto. Hey, welcome. I'm so glad to see you. Um, it, uh, Oh, and mommy does keto says the grill cast iron pan too. Yeah. Those are definitely favorites. I wish I, I wish I had a backyard so I could have a grill and I would grill all the time, summer, winter, all the time. Uh, so I'm definitely jealous of people who have a grill. 
and um, I did order a smokeless grill, uh, electric grill that I used to use on the countertop, but um, it, despite its name, it was not smokeless. It was a lot to clean up, and uh, you know, it was definitely some work. And then I had like a panini style, George Foreman style grill um, that I used to use that, you know, I liked, but um, it actually worked pretty well, but it, uh, it did drain off a lot of fat. So when I was trying to capture the rendered fat, that was a problem. Although now come to think of it, since I'm trying, you know, different things, maybe I will, uh, maybe I'll pull it out again. Because it was a great and easy way to cook burgers and, and you know, sausage and that kind of thing. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Marianne says, definitely preheat the air fryer. Nomusa says, um, oh, your studies took your toll. Uh, yeah, I forget. What, uh, what were you in school for? Please uh, let us know. And Abigail says, at the moment I'm cooking my proteins in the sous vide and then pan searing or broiling in the oven to finish it off. Yeah, perfect. Um, so how long are you leaving them in the sous vide? I mean, I feel like I've chosen things that were perhaps um, epically long, but, um, you know, they, they're, the food has just been, you know, going too long. So let me know. Um... Let's see, and Monica says, I would love to hear how the London broil goes. It's always tough when I have it cooked. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't cook it much. I think that is um, the key. I mean, it, it is going to be a little tough. It's, not, it's never going to be, like, super tender. But um, if you, you know, leave it pretty rare inside and you slice it thin, it can work. Although I posted the picture of my epic fail earlier this week, I thought I would try cooking it in the oven um, so I could cook a bigger piece at once. Um, in uh, and I, you know, sealed it inside a pan so that it essentially steamed itself. But the problem was that, well, one, I think I had it at too high a heat, but two, as I said, you know, earlier, it's not a great it's not a great, um, method to, um, to try to braise it and do that wet cook because it doesn't have the, you know, collagen and fat in it that, or enough of it to give it that, um, smooth velvety taste and texture that you get with oxtails or with brisket or whatever, because you don't have that fat in there. And, um, so it just ends up tasting sort of tough and dry and wet at the same time. So, um, you know, it probably is a better candidate for, um, oven roasting, a dry oven roast or the air fryer, which is what I've been doing. Uh, I really do like the taste of London broil though. It has a very, um, f for me anyway, it, it has a very kind of buttery t flavor to it. Uh, so it's, it's good. Um, let's see. Anna says, um, Pork rinds packaged are so expensive, but the raw skin is super cheap, and I do it in the air fryer, and it's just amazing. Also, steak air fryer. Oh my God, Anna, that sounds amazing. Um, I, yeah, just fresh pork rind and uh, pork skin and cooking it in the air fryer, man. Yeah, that's got it. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Angel says, laughing out loud, 90% uh, grill my steaks, but I'm in Arizona, and if, uh, if I air fry, I cut into steak bites and use fat for topping. Oh, my God. I love my chuck chunks. I do that, too. I get the chuck roast, and I cut it into these little, you know, I call it toddler food, um, but, you know, these little cubes, and then I air fry it for, you know, six, seven, eight minutes, and um, it's delicious that way, and it's so easy, and I like it. I especially like it because more surface area is exposed, so it's getting, you know, brown and crispy, and you get more of that brown and crispy um, taste and flavor than if you were pan frying the steak, so... I have definitely been known to cut up my ribeye into those cubes and cook it in the air fryer rather than uh, eating it just, you know, like a regular fried steak in the pan. 
uh, okay, so, uh, oh, Namusa, you're getting your master's as is a nurse practitioner, and your last exam is on Monday. Well, congratulations. I hope that eating carnivore it really helped you with the mental acuity and the memory and the ease of studying, and I wish you the best of luck, and um, I know you're going to do great. I am, uh, you know, stoked, and um, I'm excited to hear about your success. Let's see. Angela says, um, some steak bites I cook rare and, um, some I make really crispy, really hits all my cravings in my air fryer. I 100% agree. You and I of the same mind. Totally agree. Um, Island Girl, yes. Congratulations to Nomusa and, um, Mar L, uh, Yes, great idea. And she also says congratulations to Nomusa. Uh, Mommy Does Keto says making stewed oxtails and tripe tomorrow. Wow, wow. Well, I'd love to hear how the tripe goes and what you think of it. Um, it's delicious stuff, so that's awesome. Let's see. Um, and Abigail says depends on the cuts. Steaks one hour, pork chops two hours, beef roast of course eighteen hours to twenty four hours for pork butts, four hours for fish and hamburgers forty five minutes. Ah uh, yes. Um, so uh, okay, that's not so bad. That's um, well, I don't know. I guess some of it is is long, eighteen to twenty four hours is long, but um, cool. Oh, well, I'd love to see some pictures. I'm going to have to make sure I follow you on Instagram and look at your posts. Um, okay, Mommy Does Keto says, uh, Oh my God, Anna, I'm going to make the pork skin s sounds delicious. Yes, indeed. And Char says, I've started using a sous vide. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, so definitely let me know what you think of it and what are the things that you're cooking in it. And... Um, Let's see, Abigail says it lessens the time in the kitchen, especially when dealing with a 20-month-year-old. Yeah, so the less time you spend cooking and, like, actually paying attention to the food, the better. Um, so, yeah. Uh, okay. So, wow, I, you've all shared some really great ideas, and um, I look forward to hearing more of them. You know, I, like I, I said, I, you know, I try to post this stuff on my Instagram channel, so that, you know, everybody can get ideas about how to cook and what, you know, what food should look like and how, um, you know, how to put together a good carnivore program. And, uh, you know, I just want you to know there's a lot of food in the world. You do not have to eat only ribeye or only hamburger. Those are both delicious foods, but there's like a lot of things out there and, you know, lots of things to try. Um, cooking doesn't have to be super hard and complicated. You just want to pair, you know, the right method with the right cut of meat. And I hope that we talked about that tonight and you kind of got, um, a good sense of what, you know, what the right cut of meat is for the, the, you know, and the right cooking method. And, um, and I hope that you kind of got the sense that it's okay to try and eat lean meats as well. So, um, they're all good. And, you know, you can pair them in different ways so that you get the fat that you're looking for. Um, you know, it doesn't all have to be one type of meat. And, uh, you know, mix it up. Try some different stuff. And, man, I did not even get into talking about the organ meats. So I want to hear, um, well, how Mommy Does Keto's Tripe turns out. And uh, I think somebody else had talked about eating, well, skin. I mean, that's, I guess that's an organ meat as well. So, but you know, skin is, uh, we all know how delicious that's going to be. Uh, but I, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to do on another show, some of the organs. I definitely do not think that you have to eat organ meat. If you like it, eat it, enjoy it. If you don't like it, don't eat it and don't worry about it. Try it every six months and see if your tastes have changed. Maybe it will and maybe you'll like it, but you know, maybe you won't like it and it's fine. You don't need to eat it if you don't like it. I hate to see people, you know, trying to force down stuff, thinking that it's going to be, um, good and beneficial. If your body is sending you a signal, I hate this. Um, listen, <laughs> listen to your body. 
Um, but likely your taste will change and you likely will get to the point where you don't hate it. And, um, and you know, maybe you crave it every now and then you eat it and then you don't crave it again for, you know, weeks or months. That's a sign too. You know, that's a sign there was something in it that you needed and then you got it and you're topped up and you don't need it. So anymore. So, you know, so I would say just kind of take your time, relax, enjoy it. Like, that's the thing about the carnivore path is you're meant to enjoy it and, um, and have fun with it. So those are my words of wisdom and, uh, my recommendations. Let's see. And, uh, Oh, Mar L you were looking at one of my earlier videos and then I came up live. So awesome. I love it when, um, you know, people are able to are new and jump in for the first time. So welcome. I really appreciate it. And, um, let's see, Shar Shar says that I started fr air frying my steak bones. Ah, nice. Excellent. <laughs> so does that mean you, um, continue to gnaw on them or, um, you know, your, uh, your pet gets to, to cook, to eat them? I know my dog, um, doesn't like it when I eat bones cause I'm sure she's like, eh, this is my food. What are you doing? Don't eat my food. Give it to me. So, uh, there you go. And Nomusa loves organ meats. Yes. Um, Mar L says I'm doing a brisket in the oven right now. First brisket, right, right pounds after, uh, I don't know. Let's see, maybe eight pounds after trimming off 3.75 pounds of fat. I hope it turns out. Ah oh, man, you trimmed off all that fat. Oh, if only, if only I could find a brisket with that much fat on it, I would just be in heaven. Um, unfortunately, the ones I find are often very, very trimmed. And I'm like, do, do you understand that this is like a fatty cut of meat? Like, where is all the fat that you cut off? Um, so I'm very jealous, but, um, anyway, enjoy. I hope it turns out good. I hope you like, um, how you've, uh, how you made it. Let's see. Anna says, um, at mommy does keto, please do a tripe video. I have not eaten it since I was a kid loving bacon and liver pate. Excellent. Yeah. Yes, please. At mommy does keto, please make a video of how you make the tripe. That would be super helpful. Island girl says organ meat affordable in Jamaica, only beef liver for me. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. If you like it and you know, you have access to it. Great. Um, you know, liver is commonly eaten in a lot of places, so it's a good, yeah, it's a good choice. Um, and mommy does keto. Yes. You're going to film it. Awesome. So everybody, uh, you know, follow her and, um, you know, and, and be ready to, to see this video. Cause I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, oh, large picture. Hey, welcome. I'm so glad you made it. I know we're coming up on the end, but I'm so glad you all made it here. I've had a great time tonight, uh, talking and, um, this has really been helpful to, uh, you know, for me to pull my thoughts together and put up some of these recipes. There's many more recipes that I didn't yet put up. So I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll do this again. And, um, you know, and maybe I'll ask you guys to, if you can, uh, you know, tech, uh, send a uh, DM in Instagram or, you know, send a message somehow of some of your favorite recipes so that we can go ahead and share them. And that pro protein sparing modified bread, um, phew, um, sorry, I should really make that. I should just really go ahead and make it at least once. Um, I know everybody else loves it and they're making it all the time. I just, you know, I just haven't done it, but I, I probably should just go ahead and do it. So perhaps I will. And, um, and I'll, I'll let you guys know what I, what I think. Uh, Marl got the brisket from Costco, had plenty of fat even after trimming, you know, yeah, I'm, I have just, I have not gotten that, you know, Costco membership, but maybe I'm just going to have to do it. Cause like, I, that's, that's where, that's, that's what's up. That's what I want to hear about. Um, Maria Cruz asked me how much am I eating a day? So, uh, lately I have been doing my, uh, so I have a program, the maximum weight loss, um, or fat loss program. And, um, so it's, it's a different approach than what I had been doing before. So I'm actually tracking my food a lot 
in my fitness pal. So, um, you know, so I know whereabouts I'm coming about and, uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of helpful to, to see, you know, and to know how much I'm eating. And, um, you know, so I, what I've been doing is higher protein, lower fat. And, uh, and I guess that's about with a lean protein, you know, it's anywhere from one and a half to two pounds of lean protein. Uh, but Maria, you know, you kind of got to focus on what you want to eat. Like, um, you know, your appetite is going to be the best, uh, definer of how much you should eat. So it's important not to get sort of hung up on these, um, external rules about how much or how little or what type of food you eat and let your body really tell you. So, um, you know, I mean, it's certainly possible there are people who are eating too little food. Um, but well, for me, like that's never, ever been a problem. (laughs) Oh, it's never been a problem that I don't eat enough. <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, even on carnivore, it, I think that it is a problem that I have eaten too much. So, um, that is why I go on the, um, you know, this, uh, fat loss approach because, uh, you know, like everybody during quarantine, you know, eating more and having more access to food, not being, um, not only, you know, not working out, but just like not moving and not going anywhere and not taking the subway. Um, you know, there's just so much less movement going on in my life. And so, um, yeah. And so like everybody, you know, I've put on some quarantine pounds and, um, and I think especially because I love, love, love fatty food and I love how, you know, you can fry up fat and it gets crispy and you use the salt and it's just like this delicious thing. And, um, and so it, you know, it's just easy to go way overboard with that. Uh, the thing I like about the leaner meats is, um, I find it hard to go overboard with them. Like, you know, I eat as much as I need to, to be satisfied, but then, you know, my hunger turns off and it's just like, okay, I'm, I'm fat enough, you know? So I, there's not really, any danger of me like picking out on London broil. Um, though there certainly absolutely is that danger if I were eating like pork belly. Um, so, you know, so it's interesting. It's interesting to watch the different approaches, the different, different foods and everything. Um, yeah. Let's see. Char, uh, Char Char says sous vide when, uh, pan searing works best for her. Yeah. Um, Paulette, I do have a liver pate recipe. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, put it that, you know, so that I could put it up on the screen, but it is somewhere in, I think it's somewhere in my Instagram, but I will have to post it again. But basically I saute a pound of liver and then, um, add, put it in the food processor. I add a pound of whatever kind of fat, and usually I would mix it up. So it's a combination of fats, but I would, uh, urge you to put more tallow, um, or, or suet or whatever, you know, um, whatever, uh, fat you're going to put than butter because butter melts so quickly. I've made pate with just butter, but like, as soon as it touches even a warm plate, the whole thing goes, you know, it just melts out completely. So I would encourage you to use, uh, you know, a firmer fat that doesn't do that. Um, and bubble girl says a Costco pork belly. Um, yeah, Costco is where it's at, I guess. Um, and Anna looking for, looking forward to Costco coming to New Zealand next year. Um, yeah. So Danielle, uh, Costco, yeah, definitely has some good stuff. So it's, um, it's a good place to look. And, uh, yeah, congrats again to Nomusa. Monica says Becky Niles, uh, on YouTube makes a carnivore bread with carnivore crisp that I want to try. Oh, wow. Okay. I totally got to hear about that. I, I can't even imagine how you would make, or are you saying she makes a protein sparing modified fast bread and adds like flecks of the carnivore crisp in it so that it's a crunchy bread or, um, I don't know. I, I want to hear all about all of those things. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mommy does keto says, yeah, under eating has never been my issue either. 
<laughs> and Anna says, Paul, it's sensible. I fry about a pound each of bacon and liver, lamb, beef, or chicken, then add a couple of ounces of butter and some cream, and then blend with a stick blender and salt to taste. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, I salt my pate heavily. It really does taste better to me, like when it's got a lot of salt in it. And this is one place where I do need spice. So onion powder. It doesn't have to be a lot, like a teaspoon in that pound, but there's something about the onion powder that really helps the, the taste to blossom and, and really taste better. So that's my recommendation. Um, and let's see. Uh, awesome. All right, so I think we learned a lot tonight and um, we got a lot of good information. So if you like the video, again, hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe, share it with somebody, um, share it with people who like to cook who might have missed it tonight. I would really appreciate you getting the word out there. And, um, you know, and make sure that you check out Bel Campo and use my code 8 a 10 You'll get 10% off your order. And, uh, yeah, I had a great time tonight. Thank you so much for being here. And, um, you know, I'm going to wrap up now and I will see you all next week. And, uh, I think next week I'm going to flip back and do, you know, just like the Q and A's, um, like, uh, like we did last week. So bring your questions, bring new people, bring people who are, um, beginners who need, uh, who need answers and, um, we'll, we'll go through it. Let's see. Wendy says, I love to mix ground beef with ground lamb. Oh yeah. I've never done that, but that sounds amazing. Why have I not done that before? I'm totally going to do that. Um, and Paulette says organ meats cured your anemia at 100%. Like there's no better source of iron. Um, so yeah, if you have anemia, you just, you gotta, you gotta stomach it and you gotta swallow the, you know, some liver down. And I don't think it even takes more than a, you know, a couple weeks even but you got to do it. Um, Anna says also, if you, uh, sear your air fried steak or smear your air fried steak with the pate for the last minute of cooking, it makes the best crust. Oh, interesting. That is an excellent idea. Excellent. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. And I will see you all soon. Thank you again. Good night.